Okay, it's a long distance riding. Anyone can do it. You don't have to be that experienced. Uh, this is my first time doing a long distance ride. Total journey is from London to uh, Northern Italy, which is about 900 miles. Um, this is the second day, stayed over in a hotel. First day was London to Dover to Calais to Bourgogne Brest, which is just south of Dijon. That was about 500 miles riding time. Um, let's have a look at what you should probably take with you for a long distance ride. So you can do a long distance ride on pretty much any bike. You don't have to have a sports tourer or an upright bike, which many of you might think would be more comfortable. Um, most modern bikes now are pretty well adaptable to be uh, comfortable for long distances. You just have to perhaps give up um, a little bit of sports aspects, sports performance if you uh, have a sports bike. So this is our bike, a 2008 GSX-R 750 Suzuki. Um, what we've done to adapt it for a long distance ride, uh, well first and foremost is luggage. Um, I'm travelling for about 10 days which is quite a long time really in terms of trying to pack enough clothes and uh, other things that I will need not just for my trip but for the, um, so not just when I arrive but for the actual trip. So the first thing I've done is we've got a Ventura Euro 3 um, luggage kit. They make these specifically for your bike. So it comes with the frame which attaches to the rear and suspends all the bike, all the weight off the bike. Uh, I think the capacity of this is about 65 litres, which has got, as you can see, pretty much everything in it that I can possibly get. Um, it also affords you a protruding section, which you can strap on other things. So I've got um, a very good Oxford uh, waterproof um, cover, bike cover, which is pretty much essential for keeping it out of prying eyes if you're parking up somewhere where you're not quite familiar which is probably everywhere along the trip. Um, and then I've got my um, lock as well. Very, very thick, hefty lock. In this case, it's an Almax um, lock, which should be one of the best on the market. And then um, a very simple tank bag. Now, this model bike actually has a plastic shroud on the front of the tank, so I can't mount a traditional uh, magnetic tank, which is the majority on the magnetic tank bag which is the majority on the market. So I've gone with a simple um, strap one. So it has two straps which go under the, under the tank here and then under the seat and under the main hinge for the tank. Um, luckily uh, and Garrett were able to provide this at the last minute. This one's quite a small one which, is, which I actually quite prefer because I'm only keeping in here things I need for my trip such as um, Passport, documents, um, water, and camera equipment. And obviously the sat nav here. We've got the uh, Garmin Zumo 550. Now, this model, it didn't come with any fixtures and fittings that would allow us to um, attach it to the bike itself. It did come with some, but it's more for, I guess, naked or upright bikes that have a traditional bar. We don't have anything like that here. Um, I see a lot of bikes with custom fittings attach onto a ball point here. If we had to spend more time preparing for our trip, we'd probably been able to find one. Um, that said, having the Garmin here is still it's still it's still workable. There's only a little bit of glare, so sometimes you have to shield it. Um, which is a bit of a pain sometimes, especially if you're in a built-up area and you can't really afford to take your eyes off the road. And obviously we've got a, an iPhone just back up. Uh, we found the back the iPhone invaluable actually because the Garmin couldn't find uh, the final destination, the hotel. You uh, didn't understand the French address, um, whereas using the iPhone did, just using Google Maps, perfect, knows absolutely where everything is, first time, no messing around. The only thing is, obviously, uh, you don't get to turn, turn navigation with an iPhone yet. Um, okay, what else? Okay, these devices, well, the sat there, first of all, is wired into the bike's power supply, as you can see here. It um, comes with two wires that you, um, you have to attach to the battery. Now, unfortunately, this model didn't come with any sort of um, eyelet to mount it onto the bike battery terminals, which was a bit unfortunate. But luckily, we were able to piggyback another item which we've installed, which I'll show you now. Here we have an onboard video system uh, to record the whole trip. This was supplied by actioncameras.co.uk. Uh, this is a very professional setup. You don't just have to go for the professional ones. 
because they have integrated ones which are like um, like uh, bullet cams or a, a hair stick or wax, that sort of side. And you can stick those in your bike pretty much anywhere. Um, so this one just roots the cable underneath. And then we actually have in here the control unit, which again runs off the bike's battery. Now this does come with, or did our one did come with a separate kit that allows you to uh, attach it directly to the bike's battery. And we've run the sat nav off that as well, which is quite handy. So um, you have to be careful that you don't drain your bike's battery. So always turn it off when you're not using it. It does come with a warning to say, be careful about the ignition, don't turn it off without stopping filming. But in our case, that didn't affect things. Um, it carried on filming whether the bike was on or off because it connected directly to the battery. This kit is called a POV, I think it's called a 5.1 model, and it actually comes with a remote control, which I've just been able to um, uh, secure onto, my, onto the uh, yoke there. So it's much easier for me to control, just start and stop, and turn the ignition off. It's a very good system, hopefully we'll get some video of the whole trip up on the website. Uh, records for about 6 hours on an 8GB SD card, uh, which we found just enough. I was actually riding for about 6 hours yesterday. First day was about 500 miles, including the English bit and the French bits. Um, obviously, when you're going on a long distance ride, you need to make sure your bike is up to the job. So, make sure it has a service, so it has things like fresh oil, make sure the brake pads are good. Um, if you have a loud exhaust, as we do, you may want to get the baffle made up because you really don't want to be um, annoying the, uh, the drum doms or the cabinary, depending on where you're going. So we're going to France to Italy, so we have two police forces to contend with. Um, chain maintenance, absolutely vital. Um, we're doing about 2,000 miles on this trip, which is a huge thing to, uh, a huge distance to add on to the chain. Um, put about 10 or 20 percent of the chain's life. So you want to make sure it's properly tensioned at various points along the way. Um, you can see here that after the first day, we've got a bit of slack. So I'm going to be tightening this up in a minute. I've just lubed the chain already. So carry a little um, can of uh, spray-on chain lube with you, something that you can just pack away easily. The standard tool kit um, obviously is needed to, uh, to adjust the chain. You may want to extend your tool kit as well to carry a few more things. The Suzuki toolkit is fairly comprehensive, um, albeit very low quality, but it does service most of the bike. But I did have to add a couple of Allen keys and uh, slips as well for things like cable tyres. Cable tyres and duct tape <laughs> should be every biker's um, in, their, in their emergency kit. <laughs> but in many situations, if I didn't have those, I would have been royally stuffed, especially at track base.